Hey, we have here the integral from zero to pi of sine to the 100th x dx. The scary part here is this exponent. We have this 100 for an exponent, and that's gonna be hard to deal with. So before I do anything, what I wanna do is just go over the power reduction formula for sine. Okay, looking at our power reduction formula without not having any bounds yet. And so we notice what this will do for us is when we have a large power for n, we can reduce this into two less. So it's sine to the 100th, we can get this into the form of sine to the 98th with this other piece. And this is nice, and this can work if we had a reasonable power. Maybe it was like sine to the 8th. We can maybe just use this a few times and get to something we can calculate. Now, because our power is 100, this is not going to really get us there very fast, so we're going to need some other things. Let's look at what happens when we have our bounds on this. Let's just use the same bounds we have here, pi, um, 0 to pi. And then we'd have to evaluate this from zero to pi as well at the end. And then let's just focus on this piece right here and see what happens. Let's plug in our values. So if we look at what happens at pi, uh, at pi cosine is negative one, but sine at pi is zero. So for our first piece, we're just gonna have zero. Minus, then we plug in a zero here. Again, cosine's one, but sine's zero again. So zero times that is gonna be zero. So this whole piece is going to zero. And it turns out if our bounds, every 90 degrees, either sine or cosine is always gonna be zero. So if one of these are zero, it's gonna multiply everything to zero. This whole term is gonna go away. So what we can do then is just look at this kind of, now we've got a slightly simplified formula. It still doesn't get us too far, but we're still gonna have to iterate over and over again. because we're just gonna be able to go to, from sine to 100 to 98 to 96 to 94. It's still gonna take a long time. So. Let's look at some specifics. So our, if we call our sine to the n, at n is 100, we'll call this i sub 100. Then our integral is gonna be, here we have our sine to the 100. And just using this formula, 100 minus one, n minus one is gonna be 99 over n at 100. And then we're gonna have this integral again, zero to pi, but now we've reduced from 100 to 98. And so we can write this thing as i sub 98. So we're gonna have 99 to a, over 100 i sub 98. Then we can repeat the same thing. What is gonna be, what's i sub 98? That's gonna be 97 over 98 times i sub 96. And we could just repeat this over and over again. You see 98, 96, 94. But if we were to keep going this way, it's gonna take us all day. So let's see if we can find a better method. What I want to do next, instead of starting at 100, let's actually just start at zero. We'll go the other way and let's look at what i sub zero is. So going from zero to pi, sine of zero x dx. Sine of zero is just one. So we're just integrating one. That's just going to be x from zero to pi. And that's just going to be pi minus zero or pi. Let's do the same thing for i sub one. Now if n's one, sine at one, this is actually just sine. So we can integrate this and we'll get the integral of sine is minus cos x, just evaluate from zero to pi. Cosine at pi is minus one, but we have a negative in front, so it's gonna be one minus, cosine at zero is one, but we have a negative sign. So this is going to be a minus times minus plus, so we're gonna have a two here. Next, let's look at i sub two, but we're gonna go now back to our formula and we'll plug this in. So n minus one, two minus one is one over two. This here is gonna be just i n minus two. So i n minus two is gonna be i sub zero. We just found i sub zero to be pi. So this value is gonna be half times pi. We could look at i sub three. That's gonna be three minus one is two over three times i sub one, but i sub one is just two. This is gonna be three over four times i sub two, but we have it right there. I'm not gonna multiply this out, we're just gonna do it this way. Okay, now I've added the value for i sub six, i sub seven, and at this point, I think we can clearly see the pattern that this is going five, three, one, odd numbers, decreasing. This one's going six, four, two, even numbers, decreasing. Here it's the same thing, but for we got a different for the even numbers, we get odd on the numerator. For odd numbers, we have even in the numerator. It turns out that what is happening here, this 
numerator is n minus 1 double factorial, and this denominator is n double factorial times our i sub 0. And the same thing over here, this is the same, this is n minus 1 double factorial over n double factorial, but this last piece is i sub 1. We notice that the odd numbers go to the 1, even numbers go to 0. So after all that, what have we done? We have some kind of formula now for these integrals of, uh, for sine and cosine with large power for, but we've separated in the two cases. So when it's even, we have this n minus one double factorial times n double factorial over i sub zero. For odd, we have n minus one, same thing for the coefficient, n minus one double factorial, n double factorial i sub one. And then you may want to see this Instead of having representing this in double factorial, can we represent this a different way with factorials? Yes, we can. I have a previous, I just did a video recently also, I'll provide a link to that on how we come up with another form for this. So rather than go through all that now, because it's kind of a little, it takes a little time to go through all that. But what this formula is for this is gonna be, for the even case, half n, n factorial over k factorial times k factorial, k is just gonna be n divided by two. We can also write this as half n, n choose k, or the binomial coefficient, just noticing that the definition of this is this. Sorry, I forgot the i sub zero for a second, so I just added that back in. Okay, now for our case, when n is odd, we're gonna have two to the n minus one times k factorial times k factorial over n factorial. But our k has got a different value. Our k over here is going to be n minus 1 over 2. Okay, so just wrap this up. Let's find the value of our integral. This thing is going to be our i sub 100. So we need to find what this is. 100 is, being, 100 is even. So we're going to use our even formula over here. So we can write this as 1 half to the 100. We'll use this notation. Uh, either way, we can do 100 factorial over... 50 factorial times 50 factorial, and i sub zero is pi, and we'll, we'll do it this way as well. So I'll write it as half to the 100, 100 choose 50 times pi. And that's it, so if you need some more background, I have some other videos, so I'll provide a link with how we came up with these double factorial formulas. I have an introduction on the double factorial. I also have some, I have two videos on the uh, power reduction formulas. And I also have a quiz, Power Reduction Integrals. I'll provide a link in the description. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day.